class, what I really want to do is I want to take a look at how we can take full color logos like you see here with this dynamo design and really elevate them to the next level by adding spot colors of glitter, foil, metallics, and really just changing the way that full color logo looks. This is going to be a way to really make your business stand out against competitors and really make your designs pop. And it's a trend that started last fall um, in the retail sector, and we're starting to see it translate more into custom apparel and personalization, specifically with um, personalization for events or sportswear or spiritwear in different markets like that. And so we're going to look at how we can create those designs with heat transfers for a variety of markets in this class. And so to start, what we're going to do is we need to look at how we create those looks. And for each look, we're going to have two specific components. The first one, most typically, is going to be the full color logo, which has been produced um, as a digital transfer with a print and cut system. And so there's a variety of ways to get digital transfers. With digital transfers, you can either order them custom printed from a supplier like Stalls or Transfer Express, or you can also print them yourself if you have a solvent ink um, print or print and cut system like a Roland Versicam. And so I want to launch a quick poll just so I understand how many of you here own a solvent print and cut system that are actually creating these in-house. So we'll launch that now and take a look. And so what this poll is going to do is it's going to help me just to be able to reference in the artwork some different tips and things for you to understand when you're creating artwork for these types of um, capabilities. And so if you have a solvent ink printer, go ahead and time that in now. Once that's complete, we'll go ahead and share the results out and continue on with the second portion that we'll need to create these designs. All right, looks like we're about finished. We'll go ahead and close that poll. Karen, can you share the results on uh, how many of them own a solvent printer? 21% do and 79% do not. Okay, great. So it looks like a bulk of you don't have solvent printers. So I'm going to touch briefly on some artwork things for those of you that do have solvent printers that will really help you in creating these full color graphics and just choosing artwork for it. But for those of you that don't, keep in mind all of these transfer designs can easily be ordered and created for you from a transfer supplier like Stalls. And so the first component is going to be your um, digital transfer. And the second component would be a vinyl cut transfer or a heat transfer vinyl or a CAD cut material, which is what the um, industry term requires it as. And it would be, this is glitter flake, there's foils, reflectives that we'll use. Um, but this would be to use that spot color finish to be able to add that pop of the design for your logo. And so to create these, you would be using either a vinyl cutter or, again, ordering a custom transfer, which is easy to do. So now that we have an idea of the components that we're going to need to create all of these designs, the first step in any full color process is creating artwork. And so it's easy to take an, a full color design that a customer has been giving you, like you see here with this Dynamo logo, and pull out portions of the artwork um, and add spot colors to it. And we'll talk about considerations for that. I'm going to switch over to my computer because I want to talk about an artwork software um, that really helps to grow what you can offer as a digital company or for full color logos. And one trend that we're starting to see a ton with print and cut is uh, photo images or pictures. And so I can actually search for a term, maybe basketball, baseball, racing, on greatdanegraphics.com and find a ton of clip art that is really designed for printing and cutting or whatever my design process is. And so some of the artwork that I'll be using here today, whenever I want to create real realistic photo prints that really create a unique pop off the garment, I'm going to be using a lot of the artwork from Great Dane Graphics. Like I mentioned, this artwork is designed for the method that you're printing. And so if I go down to the print and cut, Artwork, what this is going to do is it's going to give me print and cut ready artwork that I can download with cut lines and everything already ready for it. Um, being able to process through my solvent print machine or send to my print company. And so with this type of design and this type of artwork with um, the Great Dane Graphics, it's a subscription based program. So this is something that when you're designing, if you're using Corel Draw, Adobe Illustrator, or CADWorks Live, you would need to buy a subscription um, to Great Dane Graphics, which then gives you up to 200 downloads to have throughout the um, year and gives you a ton of options with new artwork and a lot of really cool things there. But one of the things I really love for full color, as I open up this design that I've already downloaded into my Corel Draw software, is the ability to have cut lines. Um, and I'll zoom in here a little bit closer. But you'll notice that the um, artwork has a little bit of a bleed on the outside of a cut line. For those of you that have solvent ink printers, you would likely notice that this um, 
pink little outline here as I pull it away from the design so you can see it is what they consider a cut contour and so if you're looking to create logos like this the nice thing about the artwork that's already been created for print and cut other than the fact that it has the gradients and everything that really make it a truly unique image is those cut outlines are placed inside of a bleed line so if your machine is off a little bit in calibration that's going to ensure that you have a quality print and you're not going to see any white of the material from where the design cut and so it's really key whenever you're creating artwork for this process you'll notice whenever we print this um, specific logo later into the class that you're going to notice um, where I've left an area where the registration came off so I can kind of show you a little bit about how those cut lines really gave you that benefit. So once I have my clip art image, the second portion I need is going to be my cut pieces. And so the race driver is going to be my um, solvent print digital transfer and then velocity racing is going to actually be my um, cat cut portion which is going to be cut out of a different special effect material to add a pop to this logo. So when you're creating artwork for this uh, process, you have a couple of options when you're creating artwork and things to consider. With this process, adding text drop directly onto the material, anytime you're layering full color graphics and another heat transfer on top of it, you have some options on whether or not you want to direct layer the heat transfers onto each other. So digital transfer directly on, or the CAD cut transfer directly on top of the digital transfer, or you can go ahead and put them both directly down to the fabric. So for this artwork, if I drop this as it is directly on top, then I'm going to have a direct layered material. And so my reflective CAC and heat transfer material is going to directly layer on top of the digital transfer. All of the digital transfers I'm going to apply here will allow for that. The disadvantage of doing it this way is that you're going to have some issues with um, the weight of the material and direct layering and adding two vinyls basically on top of each other or two materials. So it is going to add some weight to the garment. If you're concerned with that, you can add an, uh, or create a way to drop out the text. And so what I'm going to show you here quickly in Corel Draw is a way to add an outside contour to punch through the back of the design. And so I'm going to create my contour, apply that down to my design. I'll give it a couple of minutes since this file is pretty large on my um, Corel 6. So I'll give it a couple minutes to click in. And once I finish this in Corel Draw, I'm going to show you another method through CADWorks Live. So for those of you that um, aren't familiar with Corel Draw, maybe design in another software like CADWorks Live, it'll give you the ability to do that. Give this just one more second to click back in. There it goes. And then I'm going to take my velocity racing and drop it down over my artwork. And so you're already starting to see how that white contour is creating an open space in the bottom of my artwork for my design. And so what I want to do next is I'm going to select all of these images and I just want to break everything apart so I can punch the white through the back of the designs. So I'm going to select everything, go to range, break everything apart, and then I'm actually going to move my cut contour line out so we can see this specifically. And now with this artwork, I'm going to select my white back contour, my photo image, and I'm just going to go up to Arrange, Shaping, Back minus Front. And that's actually punched through the back of that design. So if I switch over to my wireframe view, you can see how it's created that cut line around where the artwork would be. So now when I drop my velocity racing, my cut outlines would actually be through there. So both of those items are going to cut through um, are going to touch the fabric, and so we'll see that during the application. So that's kind of a quick example of ways to use it in Corel Draw. Of course, there's many ways to create artwork like this within Corel Draw and use that front minus back function. Switching over to CADWorksLive.com, CADWorks Live is actually a full um, online designer. It does allow you to create full graphics in different designs. So, for example, say I'm creating this Mustangs megaphone design, and I want it to not have that little bit of gap space that we saw um, in the velocity racing where some of the garments actually going to show through. Instead, I want to directly layer the Mustangs directly over my full color megaphone. To start, CADWorks Live has a really great textured feature, which is similar to the um, power clip function that's in Corel Draw, and it's going to allow you to take any photo image or texture or print 
and drop it into your clip art or your artwork. And so it really gives you an opportunity to start creating full color pattern graphics that you can mix and match with um, some of these cat cut materials like I've done here with the Mustangs. And so to add a texture to any clip art image, I'm just going to double click and open up the edit box on my megaphone, select the fill button, and then go into texture. So you'll notice here on my edit options for colors, I have solid colors, I have gradients, which allow me to create a gradient fill, and then I also have textures. And this is where any artwork you've ever imported into CADWorks Live is going to drop down on there. I've already got a pattern I've imported in that I want to use, but if you have a specific pattern that's on your computer that you've purchased or bought from somewhere online, you can easily import them in just by selecting the import button on the right hand side of this screen. So I'll open that and double click it really quick. If I want it to be a little bit more prominent and stand out on the garment, I can easily create a contour by adding an effect. Again, we'll give us just a second. CadWorks Live is a completely web-based program. So it takes a few minutes sometimes if we're on Wi-Fi to connect, depending on the location. Okay, great. So now I have my contour outline. I'm going to select OK. And I can make the outline as thick or as thin as I like it to be for my logo, but we'll keep it where it is currently. Secondly, I'm going to want to add my Mustang's text like you see here in through the inside of my design so I can create that full gap space. And anytime you're doing what's called a trapping technique, which is what I'm doing here in CADWORKS Live, separate from the gap outline technique that I did in Corel Draw, you're going to want to create a contour for your artwork. And so to do that, I'm going to start with my text. I'll select Mustangs, just, collecting, just selecting Add Text on CADWORKSLive.com. Go ahead and select some fonts. Let's look for a fun athletic font. There are a ton of fonts in Clipart already available built into CadWorks Live. So all of this, like I mentioned, is free. So I don't have to actually go through and purchase this through um, a software-based company. But likewise, as you look at the artwork we showed it through CadWorks or through Great Dane Graphics, it has some really unique, robust Clipart images that you could easily import into CadWorks Live and use um, for those functions. So now that I have Mustangs created, the next thing I need to do is I'm going to need to punch this through the back of the design. But before I do that, anytime you create a, a gap out or a trapping technique, you need to make the top design a little bit larger from the gap space that you've punched through the back of that design. So I'm going to double click back onto my effects or back onto my text and add a very small contour. And so the contour is going to be very minimal to where you're not going to notice much of a change. Um, so with that contour, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make it just about 0.2 millimeters instead of the 0.1 inches that we're seeing. So let's go ahead and just make this 0.02. Again, that allows me to re-edit and size down my contour. Very small. You can almost very barely see it. Um, if I think it's not going to be big enough because of that text, I can easily go to 0.03, but somewhere in that range, 0.02, 0.03. Here, if I zoom in very closely, you're going to see how it has that little bit of a gray outline on the outside of the text there. And so that gray outline is actually now going to become the front of my design. And so I'll zoom back out a little bit here so you guys can see the full artwork. But I'm going to select Mustangs. I need to break apart the black and the silver so that the silver can become the part of my de top part of my design. I'm going to go ahead and click Shaping, break apart by colors. So very similar to what I've done in Corel Draw. Move away my silver part, and then my original black part of the design is just going to punch through this artwork on the back. So I'm going to select both images. I can do that by dragging and selecting them or holding down the control key as I just did. Shaping, back minus front. And that's going to punch this black part through, which has now created my complete gap space. So when I go to create my artwork, I can print this Mustang logo. And then my glitter part is going to actually just drop down right directly over top for the artwork. And so, of course, I would want to create some more spacing in between here in the contour before I do that. But that helps to give you guys an idea 
Now as a bonus tip, before I switch out of this and start into some of the fun application, you probably noticed there was a glitter um, on the original design that, so I could show the finished result either just to you guys or if I was showing it to a customer and I wanted them to be able to see the glitter finish. You can easily add that glitter finish into the text by double clicking the text, going back into that fill function, the exact same thing we had used for the print pattern and then selecting the glitter swatch. And so to get the glitter swatches like this, this is a confetti color, but to get those glitter swatches um, into CADWorks Live, all you need to go is, do is go to stallstv.com under the resources tab. You'll notice there's a download for the glitter flake JPEGs, and so it gives you the option to download those and use them in CADWorks Live to create photo-ready prints like this for your customers. Um, and so that helps to give you guys some basic ideas for getting started with artwork. And I'll switch back to my main camera. But one thing to really consider as you're starting to create your artwork is whether or not you want to do gap space versus um, direct layering and whether or not you want to do trapping versus a gap outline. And those are just some different considerations. Personally, I'm a big fan of adding the gap outline or the trapping technique so you have a little bit less spill in the garment. And we'll talk through those when we start decorating a lot of these samples. So I'm going to head over to my heat press so you guys can see some of these applied and decorated. And so for my first design, what I have here is I'm going to be using that same Dynamo full color print logo with CAD color or CAD cut glitter flake. Load my item onto the heat press here. I'm going to switch to my overhead camera so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. And so now that I have my shirt completely loaded, I'm going to preheat to get some of the moisture and wrinkles out. And for all of the digital transfers that you guys see here, I'm using CAD Color Express Print. The reason I love this for layering full color artwork and designs is this material specifically has a nice matte finish and has a nice application where it allows me to very easily hot peel the carrier and not have any issues with um, stretching or anything like that and I can quickly tack it which makes alignment a little bit easier as well. And so for my first application you're going to notice I did decide to do a gap outline so my glitter flake portion is going to directly layer into the fabric. If not what I would have had was basically a really big area here and for those of you that have used digital transfers like this or print and cut transfers you probably notice that without open areas sometimes this, these types of vinyl designs can feel very heavy on the garment and so adding those open areas also help to eliminate that. Now CAD Color Express Print normally applies for a full 15 seconds. I'm actually just going to tack this down for 5 seconds. I'm going to hot peel the carrier. So this is where I mentioned Express Print has a nice hot peel backing. I don't have to worry about it stretching, making it difficult to align my second color. And then I'm going to drop in my glitter flake design. And so if you've used CAD color glitter flake, CAD cut glitter flake, um, or you've ever, or if you can see it on this um, design, there's actually some glitter specks that are traditionally left on the carrier from CAD cut glitter flake. Those could be picked up by this transfer, so I want to ensure um, that that doesn't happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this up to protect my transfer from sticking to the top of the platen. And I'm just going to tack glitter flake also for about three to five seconds. And so different from the full 10 second application, this is going to allow me to quickly tack that, get the carrier off, so I'm not going to have a carrier line through the inside of this or the glitter specs sparkling. And so anytime you can tack a material when you're doing multicolor applications, it can help to reduce or eliminate that carrier mark that happens a lot with layering heat transfers. Now I need this to be completely durable, so I do need to seal it one more time to ensure everything gets the full application. I'm gonna cover that. And I'm just gonna apply it for the full 15 seconds. So 10 to 15 would be sufficient. I traditionally like to go sometimes on the far end just to make sure both the glitter and the express printer getting the full amount of time that they need for this to stay and be a completely durable finish. Peel back my carrier and then you guys can see kind of the result we were able to get by adding just that spot color glitter finish in with this full color transfer. And so when I'm going and I'm selling to a school and I'm offering them all the options they have, 
I can easily say, look, I can print your full color logo onto performance wear. Here's an option um, for this logo. Or I can take it to the next level with spirit wear and start packaging these items together. I talk a lot on the Stalls TV Live events and um, on Stalls TV in general about good, better, best. And this helps to really present, this would be your, I guess, better and your best option. Your good would be a cotton t-shirt with a regular finish. Um, but it helps to be able to sell more garments when you can make them stand out with special effects like we've done here. So that works really well for school designs. Now keeping in line with this same idea of using CAD Cut Glitter Flake and unique colors with different artwork, I'm going to be using a full color artwork image that was actually taken from Great Dane Graphics um, subscription based artwork. And so this is where I'm talking a lot about the gradients and the fill that really make these images come to life on the garment and really stand out. And this is going to give you that retail ready look with full color prints and being able to personalize them in unique ways. And so to do this, I believe I'm going to have to change out my bottom platen for my smaller children's shirt. So I'm just going to undo the latch underneath here, lift out that 11 by 15. And I'm going to drop an 8 by 10, which is just a hair smaller for these applications. Once I have my shirt loaded on straight, I can again preheat to remove any moisture and wrinkles. Anytime you change out a platen, you may notice you'll need to change the pressure or adjust for the changes. So I'm going to do that now that I've put in the 8 by 10 platen. And I just do that with the over the center pressure adjustment knob. I'll take my digital transfer that's been printed in CAD Color Express Print. Line that up onto my um, trans or my t-shirt here. And then again, the same principles apply. So for using glitter flake and express print, the first step is express print for a tack of just five seconds. Peel back that carrier. And then I'm going to cover it up with the glitter flake. So here again, I've gone ahead and created a gap space. You'll notice in the artwork with the number one, how it just drops right down in there and allows me to line it up very easily rather than registering it directly onto the bird. So either option would work depending on what you feel best, most comfortable with. I do need to recover this completely and with CAD Cut Glitter Flake I want to ensure those glitter particles don't transfer over so I'm just going to tack this for a couple of seconds. Remove the overall carrier. And then I'm going to cover and seal for another application. And the cool thing about CAD Cut Glitter Flake is it has a ton of fluorescent shades, like I'm using the neon or the fluorescent green color, which gives you an option to um, really add those neon glitter blingy effects, especially for children's apparel, which, where it's really popular. So I close that for 15 seconds for the full application. And then you guys can kind of see how the finished results look on this birthday shirt. I'm going to switch my angle back to my main camera so you guys can see me and the shirt. A little small for me, but you guys can see how we get that um, photorealistic print from Dane's artwork. It really starts to pop off the garment with the glitter flake. And so, Karen, have I had any questions that have come in throughout the session here? Yes. One of the viewers would like to know if they found a Great Dane graphic um, how would they have stalls print it and get the cost of the print? That's a great question. And so um, whenever you're looking for Great Dane Graphics artwork, that's separate from stalls. So you would have to um, purchase a subscription-based uh, plan through him to be able to download the artwork and use it. Um, it's very inexpensive. I think it's about $18.99 a month. And they have yearly subscriptions that make it a little bit less expensive. Um, but with that, then you would download the artwork. Um, you can add text using CADWORKS Live or another design software like CorelDRAW or Illustrator. And then once you have that artwork, you just send it directly to stalls and they will create it for you. So the digital transfer would be considered a CAD print transfer um, in CAD Color Express Print. And then the digital part or the glitter part would be a CAD Cut Glitter Flake custom transfer. 
Great. So for those of you that are attending your very first Dahl's live TV class, keep in mind um, that there are questions that can, you can easily ask questions on the right-hand side of your screen on the GoToWebinar um, task bar, so feel free to chat those in. I like to make this as interactive and live as possible. So if you have questions, feel free to ask them. So that again gives us another market that we can reach by using glitter and full color transfers. Now for the final one, for the final way to use CatGut Glitter Flake in this market um, is one way that I'm seeing a really big trend with personalization and monogramming is using pattern circles or pattern prints, whether it's a heart, a circle, a square, a diamond, a megaphone, and then dropping in a monogram over top and a spot glitter or foil. And so I'm going to create that same look using again CatGut Glitter Flake and express print. And so we'll review the application one more time as we look at this as an option for monogramming and personalization. And so one thing I want to mention is if monograms is kind of your thing and you're looking to get into more markets like this, next week on Thursday we actually have a live class that's going to review how to completely monogram with their heat press and it's going to go into how to create the artwork as well as heat pressing. And so you can register for that at stallstv.com. So the same rules apply. I'm going to load this and preheat it just to get it ready for the application. Line up my express print transfer. And now this transfer is going to be a little different from the ones you guys have seen so far. You'll notice this is a, just a complete circle, so I don't have any areas that are open and um, completely free in this artwork. And so one thing I may want to do to keep this feeling comfortable on this small children's shirt is I may want to consider actually punching this through and creating a gap space which is going to make it feel a little bit more breathable. Now what that also does sometimes is can create a little bit more um, time required in alignment or challenges there. So I'm going to tack that for five seconds. Peel back my carrier. And then I'm going to cover up my monogram and glitter flake. Cover to protect the transfer from sticking to the top of the heat press. Tack the glitter flake down for five seconds. Remove that carrier. And then I'm going to cover and seal for the final application of 10 to 15 seconds. That ensures glitter flake and express print get their full application. Remove the cover sheet, and then I have a completely finished design, personalized and ready to go. And so, I personally love the idea of using a solid gold color on this monogram shirt to add that little bit of a pop. Of course, other color combos can be really com um, comparable and create really unique finishes as well on this design. And so, Karen, if I had any other questions come in about Glitter Flake Express Print or any of the applications we've done so far? Yes. Should you put a gap space when you do any vinyl on other vinyl or just the glitter flake? Um, you know, it's, you don't have to. I guess it comes down to preference. And so the correct answer is no, you don't always have to. Anytime you have a textured finish, so if I was putting glitter flake directly over glitter flake, I would want to make sure I'm trapping it or creating a gap outline because those materials can't be layered with that textured finish. Most heat transfer vinyls will allow you to direct layer. Just keep in mind that you are adding thickness every time you add a layer directly over top of each other. So more than two colors, I would probably consider adding some gap spaces or areas in the design that make them a little bit more breathable. Um, this design, the way I have created it, creates a nice look and image, but it does have a little bit of a feel to it because I directly layered the glitter vinyl on top of this circle um, print. And so you don't have to directly layer, but keep in mind you want to keep that design as soft as possible and that's helpful. And does the heat press mark at the bottom of the design go away? Heat press mark at the bottom of the design. I assume we're looking at the um, 
work from the platen is what I would assume. So if that's the case, um, on 100% cotton, this will definitely wash away. It's just from it being ironed out on the heat press platen. If it's on 100% polyester and it looks shiny, there's a chance it could have scorched, and so that's not going to wash away. But with this one specifically, it's going to launder just fine. All right, keep the questions coming. I'm going to go ahead and grab my next design. It's not going to be glitter flake, although it does create a lot of great looks. There's more ways to use foil and foil designs. Um, and the application will actually change a little bit with the material that I'm going to be using. And so glitter flake offered a lot of great opportunities for us to quickly tack, remove that carrier mark, and then cover and seal for the full application. And so for my next design, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a CAD hologram and use a little bit more of a foil material to add the red part of this design. And one thing I really like about the way I've created this artwork um, that I think can apply a lot to you guys as I switch over to my other camera so you can see it, is that this artwork specifically, you're going to notice all I did was just add areas that I wanted to stand out or pop as the CAD cut material. And so rather than just doing name drops or textures or different things like I've done so far with the artwork, this is really another way to make the design come to life. And so taking areas of the mascot here or the titan, like the sword or maybe his cape and all of those red areas and really making them stand out with a foil finish is another really cool way to take a photo um, or a picture image and really elevate it. I like this a lot for spirit wear like I have here and I really like it for designs especially for children's apparel. I'm going to lift out my 8x10 platen, drop it in 11 by 15 since my design is a little bit larger. Load my garment on. And start my application. So I'm just going to pull this back a little bit. Go ahead and adjust my platen since I changed it. Once it's reading the correct pressure and I've completely preheated my garment, I'm going to take my CAD color digital transfer, which has been created in express print, as all the other ones have. Make sure my shirt's loaded on here straight. Go ahead and line up the express print. Tack that for five seconds. And you're going to notice that CAD Color Express Print, all of the CAD cut materials I have here, apply at very similar applications. So I can easily apply them all at 320 degrees to create this application and this unique look. So, so far I have the two color part of my design down to the garment, or I guess three colors. I've got some silvers and grays, maybe even four colors. And I'm just going to line up my CAD cut hologram into the design. And so I'm just going to let it drop down into the artwork. And so you're probably already noticing the fact that this artwork um, has already been pre-spaced and cut on the CAD cut carrier. And so when you're creating your artwork in the design process with the CAD cut, even when you have all these little free-floating free text areas or parts of the clip art, they're all pre-spaced, so it's easy to line up and get a nice graphic there. I am going to cover this and seal now. Hologram applies for a full 10 seconds. And you're going to notice I'm going to get a little bit of a carrier mark, so we'll look at another tip for that for these applications. Now CAD Color Hologram is a 10 second application and a cold peel, so it will not allow me to tack and remove the carrier as I've done with CAD Cut Glitter Flakes. I'll have to um, get a little bit more creative whenever I want to make sure I'm eliminating that carrier mark. Go back to the cover sheet. Of course, I covered that to make sure it doesn't stick or stay to the top of a platen, but always a good idea to make sure you cover in general. And give it some time to cool down. And cold peel materials traditionally just um, need a little bit more time for the adhesive to set before that plastic carrier comes off. See if I can go ahead and peel this. 
So you may already be starting to see um, some of the carrier mark that's cut through the top of the Titans here, down through the bottom of my lines. If you've ever layered heat transfer vinyl and had a carrier in between the artwork, you've probably seen this happen. And so to remove carrier marks for these types of applications, I'm just going to cover and reseal to remove those. But you guys are already starting to see how great that finish looks with hologram. And so I'm just going to cover it and press it for about five more seconds to get that carrier line kind of ironed out there. So now that's completely been eliminated. So I've got a nice premium design. And you can see how the hologram just adds really cool areas of the design. And hologram is actually surprisingly a very inexpensive material. So it's easily able to be added to add a foil um, onto this artwork and these designs. And so I'm going to switch back over to the camera. I think you guys had a couple of questions, so go ahead and chat those in. What does it cost on average to create one of the mixed media shirts, and how much can you charge for them? That's a really good question. So there's a couple of variables, and so I'll price it out a couple ways. If you are ordering transfers from stalls, um, it depends on if they're all custom or if you're cutting them in-house. So if I'm ordering custom transfers directly from stalls to create um, something like, we'll say, this one here, where I have a CAD Prince transfer and a custom CAD cut. Now, the CAD Prince transfer is going to probably cost you um, somewhere between 7 and $0.10 cents a square inch, depending on the size of the design. I'm going to go ahead and say with this transfer, specifically custom, I'd be looking probably about $4.50 for the digital transfer and probably if stalls cut it for me another dollar fifty in the artworks let's say we have six dollars in my transfer four dollars in my blank shirt from Sanmar so I've got um, I'm up to about ten bucks I'm adding some labor and overhead I would say this is probably safe to easily sell for you know thirty dollars for this design on a custom spirit works t-shirt especially on something high-end like this now if you're producing the transfers in house that cost can significantly reduce. If you have a print and cut system, which I know some of you guys do here, you're probably looking more like two cents a square inch to create that graphic. So again, my costing is probably going to be about $1.60 versus the 450. Um, of course, there's labor and things you'll have to include into that as well. And you've got the investment of the machine. Um, but all those things considered, also cutting the vinyl yourself makes it very inexpensive. So if you have a vinyl cutter, you can cut that cat cut hologram design. Um, total, looking at the size of it, probably for about 60 cents. So again, that helps to drop your cost a little bit as well. Selling price still stays the same, but it kind of gives you some ideas of getting it produced in-house versus um, sending it out to get transfers. Okay, looks like I'm all good on questions right now. So that helps to give you guys some ideas for adding foil finishes, using CAD Cut Hologram and Express Print for the full color transfer. Now my next application I'm pretty excited about, that is one that you guys may have seen throughout some of the live events here or morning show here at StallsTV.com, but taking knockout designs and really elevating them with patterns and rhinestones. And so you can easily create designs like this and add pops of the artwork with rhinestones. Now with rhinestones, one thing you want to keep in mind is that rhinestones are not recommended to be directly layered on top of a heat transfer vinyl, so I have created a complete gap space into the center of my artwork for those rhinestones to drop down in. And so that is where having that gap space is 100% crucial because the rhinestones need to bond with the fabric. I'm going to go ahead and load my tank top onto the heat press. Having this 11 by 15 platen is really nice when you're starting to print tank tops now that it's getting to be um, summer because that razor back can now fall right off of the platen here. I'm going to check and make sure I got the same amount of material on both sides. Preheat and then I'm going to actually apply my bottom layer which is the CAD Color Express Print, this time for the full application. So where this is going to be different from when I was layering hologram and glitter flake and other heat transfer vinyls is this specifically needs the full application. And reason being is that these rhinestones are going to be at a higher level than the vinyl is. And so anytime you layer rhinestones with a heat transfer vinyl, you need to make sure the heat transfer vinyl goes on first for the full application to ensure they get an accurate pressure and that the pressure from the rhinestones doesn't suck away the pressure needed to apply the vinyl in the application. So I'm going to apply 
had color express print down for a full 15 seconds this time rather than the short five second application that I was able to do with all of the other materials. Going to remove my carrier so my express print's been put down on the artwork. And if you're looking to find out ways to create this knockout artwork um, yourself and you haven't seen the video yet, I'd head over to stallstv.com. Of course, when you're done with this, don't go yet. Um, but there's a huge tutorial video, I think it's about 45 minutes, on ways to create knockout designs like this. And the artwork is in the beginning, so it shows you how to do that through CADWorks Live. So if you just go to the All Videos page, you'll be able to find that. Now I'm going to drop in my rhinestone transfers. making sure they don't stick to the vinyls. I'm just kind of spreading them out a little bit there. And I do have some heat transfer exposed. I'm going to cover it just to ensure it doesn't stick to the heater. And I'm going to apply the rhinestones for their application. Now these rhinestones was a, uh, were created in a custom transfer from transferexpress.com. So they do custom rhinestone transfers if you send them your artwork. It applied at 320 degrees for 10 seconds. So we'll give it a few seconds to cool down there. Since rhinestones are traditionally more of a cold peel, I'll just let that adhesive set before I peel back the carrier. Luckily with rhinestones, the carrier is traditionally a little bit um, thinner, so it won't leave that same thick carrier mark that we see whoops, with other CAD cut heat transfer materials. So I'm going to peel back the rhinestone carrier there. And so now we were able to create a really cool patterned effect with some rhinestones on the inside. And the rhinestones, anytime you add them on the inside of a heat transfer vinyl design like I've done here, it just adds that pop of bling, but also some really cool dimension into the artwork, into the design. And so it adds that little bit of raised textured effect um, to be able to create that unique finish. And so all of these images for you guys that are looking for maybe a close-up print of these will be on the uh, Stalls TV blog coming soon. So we always share photos of all the items that we print um, throughout the live events on the blog. And so I encourage you guys to subscribe to the StallsTV.com blog, which is right on StallsTV.com. That was a mouth uh, twister there. But if you go to StallsTV.com, look for the blog and subscribe, you'll get constant updates when we publish really cool videos and close-up shots of garments like you see here with this Love Dance Knockout. So that's a great option as summer's coming up, cheer camps, dance camps, all of those are turning, coming around. So if you're printing for those markets, that's probably when I'd get started printing now and getting it into the catalog and showing the different dance schools so you can sell a ton of those. Now the last one moved to more of a masculine market and so of course a lot of the designs that I've shown here today have been really great for female based markets for the most part. The tighten up design could easily go both ways um, but I want to look at more of a masculine finish and one that we don't really think about much using a reflective material with a digital transfer and so I'm going to actually line up 3M reflective and this is that artwork we used in the beginning of the session. I'm going to switch my camera angle so you guys can see. I also need to swap my platen this time because my artwork is going to be a little bit larger for my custom jacket that we're going to get for the racing company. And this can open you up to a ton of opportunities. My design is going to be for racing, but think about construction companies, um, delivery companies, police, EMS, the ability to start selling full color transfers to this market but still keeping reflectives for the um, ANSI certifications or just the reflective nature that they're used to. Now that I've got the 16 by 20 platen in, printing the jacket is going to be incredibly easy on this platen. I'm just going to split this open, thread it on, so any of the bulk of the jacket is actually falling below my platen here. Once I have that lined up and ready to go, I'm just going to double check my pressure, it may need to adjust it a little bit. Almost, give it one more turn.
And now this is that full color artwork that we printed in the beginning of the session, or we created in the beginning of the session where it had that gap space. And so I put this on a dark item for you guys to be able to see, but you may notice as we get close up here, there's some white space in the bottom of the text. When I talked earlier about the uh, big benefit of having that bleed zone, especially if you're printing and cutting in-house on your own print and cut system, it's really helpful because machines over time have a capability to um, kind of come off registration. And so by having that bleed zone, you can ensure you won't get these white lines since I don't have them all the way up through here like you see at the bottom. Pull that piece of string off there so it doesn't get into the way. Now mixing CAD Color Express Print with 3M Reflective allows me to go back to the old method that I did with Glitter Flake. So I'm tacking the CAD Color Express Print for five seconds, peeling back that carrier, and then I'm going to find my reflective transfer. Here it is. And line that up. And so again, reflective um, will allow me to tack this down for just five seconds so I can get that carrier mark off. So I'm going to cover, seal for five quick seconds. And then 3M reflective traditionally applies for a full 15 seconds. So just like with my glitter flake. I'm going to recover this and apply it for a full 15 seconds. So that way it's durable. And this is going to create a really high profit, high margin jacket for me to sell to a variety of groups. Let that cool down there. We have a completed design ready to sell. And so you can see how that reflective really just makes the bottom of that design, the headlight and everything really pop. And it's going to add that reflective part to the material that I really needed in the design. And so it just creates new ways for you to um, start offering new looks to your customers and really taking your designs to the next level. And so if I have any questions, Karen, that have come in throughout this session. All right, I'm going to switch my camera angle back here to me. Here I am. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and head back over to the table, and I want to review all of these designs, including this race jacket, which I think looks really great. Um, hopefully, you guys can all agree, and we'll talk and review a little bit about what we've shown here today and some of the principles so you can take this back to your shop. So let's head over to the table. Sit this here. So I've got a couple of really great designs here. Actually, I think I have a lot of great designs. Um, hopefully, it's starting to spark some inspiration for you guys to be able to look at different ways you can grow your apparel business. And so looking at the first designs that we created that we're using um, CAD Color Express Print with Glitter Flake. So this was the Dynamo shirt, Happy Birthday, and then also the um, design with the monogram. And so with all of this artwork, whenever you're applying CAD Cut Glitter Flake with Express Print, you can apply it um, with a quick second tack of five seconds, cover it, um, peel the carrier for CAD Color Express Print, apply your glitter flake for five seconds, peel that carrier, and then cover and seal it all for a full 10 to 15 seconds so it stays durable. Using 3M Reflective with Express Print, we use that same application. And so I was able to tack Express Print for five seconds, peel the carrier, line up my reflective design here, tack that for five seconds, peel the carrier, and then I covered it all with a cover sheet and resealed it all for the full 15 seconds needed to ensure Express Print and 3M Reflective stayed durable. And so those were our first, or those were four of the designs that we created out of the six. Now when I looked at a cold peel material um, that was different from the hot peel materials like Reflective and CAD Cut Glitter Flake, CAD Cut Hologram, which added some really cool ideas for spot parts of designs, um, had to be applied in two applications. So I tacked that bottom layer down for um, five seconds and then covered the top layer for full 10 seconds. If you remember correctly, I had a little bit of a carrier mark, so I did cover that for five more seconds just to get rid of that cover mark from my background design. Always a good idea to keep in mind. 
And then lastly, I also created the rhinestone design with a full color print. And so I pulled, I went ahead and since I was mixing rhinestones, applied express print down for that full 15 second application and then came back in with my glitter, with my rhinestones for the 10 second application it required. So they both stayed durable. And so that kind of reviews some ways to use this artwork. So one thing to keep in mind is whether or not you want to use gaps outlines versus not outlines and when to use those capabilities. And think about ways to really become creative like we did with a Titan logo and make these spot colors part of your artwork. So Karen, as we're wrapping up here, if I had any questions come in. Yes, one of our viewers really loved the racing jacket and design. Where could she find a picture of that to show a customer? I'm so excited. Um, so like I said, all of the photos, these images will be up on StallsDV.com's blog. So if you subscribe there, it should be up probably within the next week. Um, so we should be able to share those out there and you can easily save any of the images from there. Great, looks like I've got all the questions. So as we're starting to wrap up the live event, um, as you guys have more questions as far as layering and full color designs, I encourage you to go to StallsTV.com. Check out the forum. You can ask them there. Myself, Karen, and other um, educators from Stalls TV, as well as other printers, are always on there interacting and talking, and we're happy to help you there. This has been a Stalls TV Live class. Thanks for watching.